what we're providing is a software suite for them to basically to not have to do their own token sale, to not have to have a floated token, but instead to build their token based off of simple token um, in a controlled, safe environment with us giving the tools to help power uh, their token economy. Um, we have a, a number of different modules uh, that we're building. Um, the first is we call the token design module. And the way to think about it is every company starts with simple token, um, which is our ERC20 token. Um, and they're able to then stake simple tokens against created their own branded tokens. Um, so it could be Jehan token. We're going to use Jehan token today. So Jehan acquires a bunch of simple token um, and then stakes that in a smart contract against, created, against creating uh, Jehan tokens. Um, he's able to brand his token. He's able to set an exchange rate. So let's say he starts with a million dollars with a simple token, does 101 exchange rates, so he creates 100 million uh, Jehan tokens. Um, and then is also able to create various types of token types and token restrictions. So for instance, Jehan might say that tokens that we give to our users for free to warm them up in the, in the network uh, can't be cashed out. So you're not giving people free money, you're giving them something they can only spend within the network. So it's a restricted tokens type. Or it could be that it's a token that is unlocked as a reward based on user behavior, uh, and maybe that token expires at a certain period of time if the user doesn't make use of it. Um, and so the point is, you couldn't do that with real cash, with real, with real fiat. You give someone fiat, they're just going to put it in their pocket. And so that's one of the things that have these various types of uh, token types. The second is we provide an identity module. So the identity module um, is, you know, if you're giving people tokens for various incentives and rewards, you don't want to have, you know, one person creating a thousand accounts and just giving themselves tokens. Um, so you have an identity module to help ensure that every one per, you know, everyone's one person. Um, and then also handling KYC checks as a service, right? Not something that every consumer app is going to want to build themselves, that we enable them to have a very easy way, if your user's cashing out above a certain fiat value, that they have to go through certain levels of KYC. Wallet modules. Um, if you've, you know, how many here, people here have a crypto wallet? Okay, so we are not like most people in the world. Crypto wallets are very complex, right? They're very confusing. You probably have a hardware backup to it. Um, what we want to do is have a really consumer-friendly uh, wallet where most, most users, don't, most consumers don't even need to know crypto keys. They can take over them if they want to, um, but a very consumer-friendly wallet that can be skinned across multiple uh, applications, that gives the full transaction history, that enables people to top up, buy more tokens, and to cash out in exchange. Transaction modules, so this is the kind of really the meat of it, being within your consumer app to be able to set up various types of transactions. You might want to say there's your peer-to-peer -peer transactions that are entirely decentralized, frictionless, with no transaction fee. There might be other types of peer-to-peer -peer transactions where the community wants to take um, a small commission or a transaction fee on the transaction. B2C transactions, recurring subscriptions. Um, there could be the, around monetizing your API. So basically being able to set up these various types of transactions uh, that your, their token can, can handle. Um, other modules, um, a ledger. So we all talk about ledgers, um, how to make that really user friendly um, and so that um, it's fully auditable in a way that consumers actually can um, kind of tap into this. Um, rights modules, administration modules, this is actually, you know, think about all the back end tools um, and that the systems that kind of app developers need. If you think about analogous to say your Google Analytics or your Facebook Analytics, um, to be able to monitor your economy, to see what the sources and sinks are, to see where people are hoarding tokens, uh, to see uh, you know, early war you know, fraud warnings and monitoring. So building all that system tools so that people can manage their economy in an efficient way. An ICO is not a fundraising event. An ICO is a token generation event, and the purpose of the token generation event should be to empower a community. Um, it should be to create almost an endowment for your, for your users, for your network, um, and the fact that you are able to um, have some people who are buying your token is a validation of the utility of your token. And it's really important. Um, every time I enter in a conversation where I hear people talking about you know, prices of tokens and um, how we're you know, doing a token sale because it's going to enable us to, you know, to make lots of money, I just want to go take a shower. Uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's really it's the wrong way to do this. You know, if we look at it with Simple Token, we're building a business first. Um, and the business of Simple Token is a software business. We're building software to enable consumer internet companies to bridge this gap from crypto to consumer. The token is an enabler.